Then God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. And God planted a garden in Eden in the east. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. <clears throat> the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. Then God said, it's not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as a partner. So out of the ground, God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And what the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. Let us pray together. Creator God, in these moments ahead, may our hearts and our minds and our lives be open to your word for us this day. Amen. So I'd like you to think about a time in your life when you have been part of creating something new. When you've been part of making something, forming something, being part of starting something that had never existed before. How many fine artists do we have here today in the congregation by a show of hands? Where are my painters, sculptors, all right? How about musicians? How many people here play an instrument of some kind, all right? How many of you are creative through the gift of acting, of performing on stage in front of other people? How many of you are creative in building things? You can take a hammer or a saw and you can build something with your hand. How many of you here today are parents? Ah, did you think about that as a creative? You have created something that never existed before. What if I told you that every single person in this room today is creative? Every person here is creative. Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, I can't paint. I can't draw. They won't let me in the choir even if I wanted to be. What if I told you that every single person in this room is creative, that you can create? Well, let's try that. Let's try to create something in the room today. We're talking about these stories from Genesis that are about God creating the cosmos, of God creating all the things that are in nature. So I'd like to create something from nature right here in the sanctuary today. I'd like us to create a thunderstorm. Do you think we can do it? All right. Here's all you have to do is follow me. I'm going to gesture for you to do something, and when I'm sort of pointing at your group in the sanctuary, just do whatever I'm doing. And keep doing it until I point to you to do something differently, all right? So you guys right here can start with me. All you have to do is this. And I want you to start listening for the rainstorm here in the sanctuary. You hear the rain coming? Hey, that was pretty good. Yeah. 
You know, part of tapping into your inner creativity sometimes is letting your inner child out, or for today's purposes, we might say your inner child of God. Uh, Ken Robinson is a world-renowned expert in creativity, and he likes to tell this story about this little preschool girl, and she's very intently drawing something while all the other kids are drawing too, and it catches the teacher's eye because normally a little girl is always doing whatever else everybody else is not doing, and so she comes over to see what the little girl is drawing, and she says, what are you drawing? And the little girl says, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher says, well, you know, nobody knows what God looks like. And the little girl responds, they will in a minute. <laughs> and Robinson goes on to say about creativity that we are all born artists. We're all born with a creative spark. And a matter of fact, Picasso was also a person who said this. We're all born artists. You think about how kids just jump in and will create art. They, they won't hesitate to do it, especially little kids. They just jump right into it. And the argument is that we are sort of, um, what we have to do as adults is not lose that. We sometimes think we have to learn how to be creative, but in actuality what happens is we unlearn how to be creative. We unlearn it. Sometimes it's whatever the culture does to us. Sometimes it's the educational system sort of takes it out of us. And so part of our challenge is to re remember, relearn again how to be creative because we are creative people down within our soul. And we know that partly because of this text we have before us today. We have these stories of creation in the Bible that the very first stories that they placed in the Bible are stories that affirm that we were created to be part of God's creative spirit. Now this may come as a surprise to some of you, but there are two creation stories in the Bible. How many people knew that? How many people know there are two of them? There are two creation stories in the Bible, one right after another. We have one in Genesis 1, and then we have the one that we started to read today in Genesis 2. What surprises most people when they come across these stories is they're very different stories from each other. It's not the same story told over twice. In Genesis 1... We have chaos. The universe is chaos. There's all these chaotic forces, and then God steps in, and God controls it all, forms that void into what we know as the universe, and gifts it to the people. In the second story, the one I started to read today, things are calm. God creates a beautiful garden, and he places the first person in the garden and says, your job is to take care of it. Till the land, water the plants, harvest the food. Oh, and I put all these animals in there, but you know what? I'm not going to name them. You get to name them. You get to be part of that creative process. Now, why are there two different cre uh, creation stories in the Bible? Well, we know now that they were written at two very different times in the history of the people of Israel. The first story was written during the time of exile when they had all been uh, basically taken out of their land and sent off into slavery in a sense. They had been uprooted. Life was chaos for them, so of course they thought of a story about God stepping in and taking the chaos and making order out of it. That's how God would help them in that time. The story I read to you today, that second creation story, was written during a time, we believe, of the monarchy, when things were very controlled, there was a good foundation for life together, and so they write a very different story, a story about how God steps in and, in this orderly universe and invites us to participate in it, to take care of the creation, to name the animals. But what we see in both stories is that it isn't just God being creative, that God invites us to be partners with God in creation. God gives up some freedom and says, you are part of the creative process with me. And if you follow the story all the way through the Old Testament, God gives up more and more freedom as the story goes on and says, it's not all about me. You're involved in this too. I will have an influence on you. You will have an influence on who I will be for you. I will help to continue to create the world as it may be. You will continue to create the world as it may be. And this goes all the way up to the gospel stories with Jesus. Where you had Jesus talking about this amazing thing called the kingdom of God. Where all people are treated with compassion and justice and peace. All people know their worth. And Jesus doesn't just talk about this like it's a nice idea. But he enacts it. He creates it in the midst of the people. They experience the kingdom of God in Jesus' midst. And then he challenges them to go out and be part of creating that kingdom of God as well. You see, the, the scriptures that come to us from our ancient spiritual ancestors say that creativity has been breathed into us by God. It's within our 
DNA. We are challenged not only to just imagine the world the way it could be, but to help to create that world in any way we can by using the gifts that God has given us. Now the challenge is that that isn't always going to be easy, right? There's a certain amount of risk to take when you're willing to tap into that creative part of your spirit. You have to take a risk. These two artists up here today are taking a huge risk by creating a piece of art in front of you, not exactly knowing <laughs> what's, what's going to happen at the end. They, we don't even know if they'll finish these works of art today. They may continue to work on them. They're not quite sure what will form out of that by the end of our time today. This choir today, I'm going to tell you, took a huge risk being creative in front of you and singing a cappella today, right? That takes a risk to be that kind of creativity in front of other people. Actors take a risk every time they step on stage and give a performance. Writers take a risk every time they pen something and hand it to another person and say, what do you think about this? If you followed that story that happened in St. Louis a few weeks ago where um, the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra was about to give a concert of Brahms' Requiem, an ode to the deaf, and before they got ready to play, people stood up in the audience and began to sing their own requiem to the young man that was killed in St. Louis months ago that has caused all this unrest. They sang this beautiful requiem and then they quietly walked out. Some people were offended by that act of creativity, but the conductor of the orchestra applauded their efforts. He said, that's true art. True art is taking a risk. It's putting an idea out there and seeing how people will react to it. I saw an interview, or heard an interview with Sting, the pop singer recently, and he talked about how over the last 10 years or so when he's produced no music, it's because he'd sort of forgotten how to take a risk. He had to remember that creativity is about taking a risk, being so passionate about an idea that you're willing to put it out there into the world and not be afraid of ridicule or that people won't understand it or people might criticize you for doing it. Christ took a risk when he dared in the face of the Roman Empire to declare the kingdom of God is in your midst. You can live in the kingdom of God now if you only be creative enough to see it and help me make it a reality. And in our story today, God takes a risk. God risks giving up some freedom to say, it isn't all going to be about me. Creation doesn't just happen once and then I'm done. It continues on. And you, you're part of helping me create the world as it can be. And so that's why this story is so important to us today, even though it comes to us from a long, long time ago. That's why the spiritual practice of creativity is so important because it's at the heart of what it means to be a follower of Christ, to be a Christian is to not only imagine the world as it could be, but to help to create that world using the gifts that God has given us. Now, that means, friends, our canvases aren't quite this small, are they? That means our canvas is the whole world. But each of us is working in a different media. Some of you are working in paint. Some of you are working in song as a way to create a new world. Some of you are working through teaching others how to create that world. Some of you, your media is parenting and helping to raise children that are passionate about justice and peace and love in the world. Some of you do it through the legal system. Some of you do it through making things and creating things. Some of you will work through the media of just listening to people that need to be heard. Some of your, you, your media is simply compassion and love for those around you. For each challenge to figure out what is the media that we, are, we have deep within us. What taps into your creative spirit, your soul, and then to share it by helping us create the kingdom of God in our midst. And so my questions for you today as I finish are, who is God still creating you to be? Still creating you to be. What is God challenging you to create in this world to bring us just a step closer to the kingdom of compassion and peace and justice for all people. And what could you do in your everyday life?
use your creative spirit to bring us into the kingdom of God. Let's pray together. Creative spirit, we give thanks today that you have placed within our souls that spark, that DNA of creativity. We all have it. Sometimes we forget about it. Sometimes we ignore it. But help us to be courageous and brave enough to tap into it to be part of creating a world where all people know that they are your beloved. Amen. We come now to a time in the service when we invite those who would join us in creating this experience.